appreciate it very much. Uh, Mike Wadza from uh, Bloomfield Township in, is it Gross Point City, Detroit? Uh, poses a bill and wishes to speak. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Senator. How are you? Members of the committee. Make sure uh, you push the uh, button and, and you're thank over. You. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, I represent uh, ProTech, which is a consortium of 60 or so cities around the state, as well as some townships, uh, and then Gross Point City and Bloomfield Township. Senator, Mr. Chairman, you've, you've received some of our written materials, and uh, I gather that you've paid attention to, to those uh, because I know that there have been some changes, and I'd like to thank the committee and MML and MTA for working so hard on those things. But I guess the reason I'm here is that there's still some things that we really need to do to try and improve this bill if it's going to go forward and actually become law. I'm going to be very quick. Um, first, there are still some 40 states, I might be off by one or two, that have not passed this sort of legislation. And of the approximate 20 that have had this kind of legislation proposed, only about 10 have passed it. Now, again, I might be off one or two. Nice thing about telecommunications is that it changes daily. <clears throat> but that's important to bear in mind. We don't have to do this. Uh, I would suggest also that local communities and uh, the industry have been negotiating for several years over a very complex set of issues. One of the things we've succeeded in doing, I think, is mobility. You may have heard it had a plan at one time to build 120-foot towers right now, right away. And uh, that was a danger. And we convinced them of that, and they have backed off. They are not doing that anymore. And that's not because of any legislation. It's simply because of the give and take between the parties who are involved, the engineers who build the highways and the police officers who respond to accidents and so on. So that's been a good thing. And I would suggest and submit that we can continue to do that, and, and that probably will re result in the best uh, for everyone. Um, so we don't have to do it. We would be only the 11th or 12th, I think, state in the, in the union to pass this kind of legislation, which clearly is very industry uh, motivated. Um, the bill takes the principal property interest of every community in this state. And, and takes it in return for, unfortunately, <clears throat> in the bill, there's only a discussion of some platitudes, and I, I, don't, I don't mean to be derogatory, but, but there's no commitment in the bill to what it is exactly that the wireless industry is going to provide in exchange for this very generous giving of public and taxpayer-supported property. We talk about what rates local government can charge wireless, but we don't talk about what rates wireless can charge the customers, the taxpayers, who are going to pay for this uh, by not being adequately compensated. Uh, we don't talk about the service. What are they going to provide? How many mega megabits per second? Where? Are they going to hit these uh, unserved and underserved areas, the poor areas? None of that is in this bill. I remember when we did the Video Service Act Mr. Chairman, and you were involved, we had a provision in there, which AT&T in particular agreed to, about not allowing unserved or poor areas to be disadvantaged as a result of some of the concessions that local government and the state gave. None of that is in here. Um, and then rate. You know, well, I think I already touched on that. We talk about the rate that cities can charge for use of the right-of-way, but we don't charge, talk about... Uh, the rate that they're going to charge their customers, our taxpayers. And, you know, rate is important. It's, it, it doesn't do any good if the service is available, but you can't afford it. Um, size. I was privileged to be here at the first hearing, and um, Senator Joe Hewn, who we worked together on some good community issues a few years ago, and I appreciated that. But Senator Hewn held up a what I assume was a microcell, probably related to the cable industry. And it is about maybe one cubic foot, size of a small pizza box. And my understanding was that he was suggesting, as someone must have suggested to him, that that's what we're talking about here in terms of equipment and what's going to go on that phone pole out in front of your home. But that's not what the bill says. The bill says six feet, and I think plus 25 cubic feet, coming to like 31 cubic feet. That's, a, that's an industrial refrigerator on that phone pole out in front of your house. And the FCC has already told us that 
if one is on a pole and it's been approved, then others can come, and there's three others. There's four wireless providers nationally. So we can look forward to potentially under this bill, the way it's written, four industrial refrigerators sitting on that phone pole out in front of your house. That is not a good thing, and we outlined that. We've, we're seeing uh, uh, equipment applications that are down the three, four, five cubic foot range, and we think that the bill should make that change so that what Mr. Hume, what Senator Hume uh, showed us is much more in line with what actually the bill allows. And then um, I was admonished not to talk about money. But the fact is this bill is about money. AT&T, Verizon, they want access to the right of way for essentially free. Uh, this bill represents fees that are about 10% of what we're seeing in other states that have not passed this kind of legislation. So it, it's a pretty significant give, and it's about the money. So if it's about the money for them, it needs to be, we need to have the conversation about the money, at least on behalf of the taxpayer, who otherwise is stuck holding the bag for maintaining those rights away on their own dime, as opposed to, if AT&T wants to be in the right of way, that's fine. I don't oppose the technology, none of my clients do. But we want to be paid a fair market rate so that we can tell our residents, your constituents, that AT&T is sharing a reasonable fair market value cost of that right of way. And the numbers in the bill, although they've improved, thank you, they are still at about 10% of where we're, what we're seeing around the country. You've got to wrap it up. got to Th wrap it up, please. I'm done. Oh, are you? Okay, I'm good. done. Good. good. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Very Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, thank Members. you. Thanks so Thank much. You. Appreciate it. And, and you did have on your card, uh, you also oppose uh, 894 and, and 5097. I want to make put that on the record. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.